us. Bella, la 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 Shabbat Shalom, and thanks so much, Rachel Amuna, for keeping it all going. So, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. In our parsha this week, we encounter a feature that is unique to Judaism. I'm not aware that it exists in any other religion. It's the right to question and to argue with God. God reveals to Abraham that he intends to destroy the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's only right, God says, that Abraham should be informed now that he is the father of all the peoples. And Abraham challenges God. Is it conceivable that you will destroy the righteous together with the wicked? Shall the judge of all the earth not practice justice? And Abraham then enters a detailed negotiation with God, bargaining with God, the way in which one would bargain with a trader in a shook. And then others follow Abraham's example. When conditions deteriorate for the Jews in Egypt after Moses has been sent to redeem them, and after God's assurances to Moses that things will improve immediately after his arrival, and thing gets, things get just horribly worse, Moses questions God in anguish. Lama hara'eta el am hazeh. Why have you done evil to this people? And later, when Moses has had his fill of the people's complaints and their belly aching, he begs God, erase me from your book, take me out of this story. Jonah enters into a protracted argument with God. He wonders why God, the God of the Jewish nation, the God of the Jewish people, should be concerned with the non-Jewish people of Nineveh. And then, of course, there's Job. Job is a fine, upright man who is suddenly hit by a series of inexplicable tragedies. He loses his fortune, then his children, and then his health, and his suffering is just absolutely awful. And as a result, he begins to question God, demand to know why he suffered, why these terrible things are happening to him. And he insists that his suffering is unfair, it's unjust, it's cruel, it's wrong. And his polemics fill the entire book, the book of Job. So what does it mean to question God? What right does finite man have to hold the infinite God to account? And doesn't questioning God's actions presuppose a, a massive lack of faith? a presumption that God doesn't always do right, or at least always do what is best. The Midrash contrasts Abraham's and Jonah's challenges to God. It seems that if you're going to challenge God, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And this is what the Midrash says. Rabbi Levi stated that the words spoken by Abraham were also spoken by Job. But Job swallowed an unripe fig, and Abraham swallowed a ripe fig. And this accounts for the differences in their responses. Job explain, exclaimed, it is all one, and therefore I say he destroys the innocent and the wicked. While Abraham, upon learning what was to take place, declared, will you indeed sweep away the righteous and the wicked? And then added, as if softening the words, but that be far from you to act in this manner. So when we unpack this Midrash, the difference between Abraham and Job is not just one of tone. There is a fundamental difference between them in attitude. Job's challenges were like swallowing green, bitter, hard, unripe fruit. Abraham's were like eating a ripe, sweet and mature fruit. Job is embittered. If this sort of thing can happen, then there's no difference between the innocent and the wicked, and they're all one. There's no justice in the world, and if that's the case, then ultimately there can be no God either. By contrast, when Abraham challenges God robustly, but with humility and with a sense of wonderment, 
because he's a believer. He's seeking to understand from a human perspective God's very mysterious ways. You see, undoubtedly, things happen in the world which cause us to question God's ways. When there's inexplicable pain and suffering, it's normal to ask why, especially when we see bad things happening to good people. And this is a natural human response. To suppress it would be false. And so our tradition teaches that it is permitted it is permitted to ask questions of God and to ask why. But there is a Jewish way to challenge God. It's not about what one says. It's about what follows afterwards. And the story told by Eli, Elie Wiesel of Blessed Memory is the best illustration of this. Immediately following the release from the camps, a group of inmates, of whom Elie Wiesel was one, put God on trial for the horrors that they had endured. A judge, a prosecutor, an advocate, and a jury were appointed. And all the inmates of the camp sat and watched the trial. After a lengthy session, hearing arguments from all sides, the judge and the jury found God guilty on all counts with no mitigating factors. And with that, everyone got up and davened Mincha. I conclude with the following charming Hasidic story about how to debate with God as if one were eating a ripe fig. Rabbi Elimelech Avrijens, one of the great Hasidic leaders, once said, Master of the Universe, after 120 years, I know that you will not allow me into Gun Aden with all of the great saints. Instead, you're going to send me to Gehenna with all of the wicked people. But God, you know, I can't bear to be in the company of wicked people. And therefore, please, can you take all the wicked people out of hell and place them in paradise so that I can be in hell in peace? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Zach, wave big, wave big, wave big, Zachy. Big yeah, wave. Zach. Big wave. You're going to wave. wave. Big wave. Yeah. Shabbat. Oh, give me this. Yeah, <laughs> good boy. Yeah. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Ramsey, Shabbat shalom. Big wave from Ramsey. Shabbat shalom. And from Michael, big wave. Hello, Michael. Big wave, last big wave, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Okay. Shabbat. Signing off. See you tomorrow, please, God. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.